sorry, I hope I didn't lose everybody. I don't know what happened, but it disconnected. So hopefully we'll stay connected this time. Um, Cause you don't want to miss the story within a story in Jambrett, right? So um, we'll give it a try and hope we stay connected. Um, so again, this is Hesgy Surprise by Jan Brett. Once there was a speckled hen who laid an egg every day only to have it taken away. A little Tompton came and took it every morning. It all started because the Tompton got tired of porridge for breakfast. Each morning, the rooster crowed as the sun came up. And Henry knew the Tompton, I mean, sorry, Henny knew the Tompton was on his way. So did the little hedgehog who lived nearby. The Tompton always called out to her, Henny, have you got a little yummy for my hungry, hungry tummy? And see here, when you can see where there's Hedgy. Here's where the cock crowed. Oh, and look who's around in the needle point. Ha <laughs> ha. And there's the Tompton. The Tompton climbed into the hen house, took Henry's warm, smooth egg, and ran off to cook it in his little kettle, sprinkled it with salt, and gobbled it down. Then he fell fast asleep in the hayloft until evening. Henny didn't like the Tompton taking her eggs, but she put up with it until one morning when she saw Goosey Goosey sail forth smiling and bowing with a stream of piping goslings following her. See the Tompton sleep. Oh my, Henny clucked. Where did all those little ones come from? Oh, my eggs are hatching, said Goosey Goosey. Here comes the last one now. And from that moment on, Henny wanted a brood of peeping chicks of her own. But how could she stop the Tompton from taking her eggs? The next morning, when the Tompton poked his head in, Henny tried. She clucked loudly and she pecked and she flew at him, but nothing stopped that hungry Tompton from taking her egg. No eggs, no chicks, no peeping babies. Henny wailed so loudly that she woke up the little hedgehog, her tears pouring down on top of him. Puff a puff a stick stick, Hedgy went as he crawled out to talk to her. Poor Henny, I've been watching the Tompton take your eggs. I'll help you trick him into stopping. The next morning, when the rooster crowed, there was the Tompton. Henny, have you got a little yummy for my nearly empty tummy? Henny and Hedgy were ready. The Tompton reached for an egg and pulled out an acorn. Hmm, said the Tompton, what's this? And off he went to try it. The orc acorn was tasty, but it didn't fill him up, and he awoke in the middle of the afternoon, grumpy. The next time the Tompton came looking for an egg, he found a bright red strawberry. It looked bigger than the acorn, so he ran off to cook it. The strawberry was jammy and sweet, but it only filled up the Tompton a little more than the acorn had. And so he woke up early. Oh, what's gonna be next? Can you tell? The sun had just come up when the Tompton was at the hen house again, his stomach roaring with hunger. 
Pushing Henny aside, he grabbed for an egg, only to find a delicious smelling mushroom. He raced off to cook it, and as scrumptious as it was, he awoke up with his little tummy growling for more. Cock-a-doodle-doo! The Tompton rushed in before the cock even finished crowing. Hanny, have you got something for my hollow, hollow tummy? This time he found a smooth, round potato, even bigger than an egg. He cooked it quickly, swallowed it down, and went back to his hayloft. He woke up at sunset, only half full. The Tompton had had enough. Henny, he shouted, tomorrow I want an egg for breakfast and nothing else. If I don't find one, I'll eat you up instead. Henny was scared. The Tompton had been tricked by an acorn, a strawberry, a mushroom, and a potato. How could they fool him again? Don't worry, Henny, Hedgie told her. Now it's time for my surprise. And he whispered in her ear. All night, Henny waited in her nest and Hedgie on his. And as soon as it began to get light, Hedgie gently covered his nest with straw and got ready for the surprise. Henny and Hedgie could hear that Tompton's stomach rumbling like thunder a mile away. He burst into the hen house, pushed Henny aside, and grabbed. Ow, 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 he said. Puff, a puff, a stick, stick. He had clutched Hedgie all closed up in a round ball with needle sharp prickles. <laughs> Henny and Hedgie listened as the Tompton ran home yowling. Thank you, Hedgie, Henny said, and looking at her dear friend. I'm sure that the Tompton won't be back here again for breakfast. Yeah, but what I can't figure out is where you have hidden my eggs. Just then, Henny heard a little peep, and then another, coming from Hedgie's nest. She looked over and saw the straw begin to move. Five baby chicks peeked out of their shells and fluffed up their down. As Henny settled down with her babies, nestled all around her, the Thompson's mother was in the hayloft making breakfast for her hungry Tompton. Hedgie, Hedgie, Hedgie. <laughs> you are full of surprises, Henny said, as she led her baby chicks out into the sunshine. But the little Tompton didn't hear a word. He was sound asleep, his tummy full of porridge. that end. Now that's what friends can do to help each other. And I hope that you're helping your friends every day, one way or another. And they all ended up happy. Hedgie with his friend, Henny with her, her babies, and the Tompton was happy because he had a full tummy. So I'd say it was a happily ever after all the way around, wouldn't you? Well, thanks for watching today. Have a great day.